I'm Kelly Doyle, owner of Kay's Body Shop Personal Fitness Training in Minneapolis. Today I'm going to talk about the components of an effective strength training program for canoeing and kayaking. I will briefly touch on the general demands of paddle sports, the specific musculoskeletal demands of paddle sports, common muscle imbalances that I see in my paddling clients, components of a properly designed comprehensive training program, and common paddling injuries. Paddling is all about dynamic balance, which basically means you need to be able to maintain your balance while you're on a constantly moving and unstable surface. How water moves depends on the medium. Uh, in the case of rivers, it tends to be more horizontal with the current. Um, lakes, it's more up and down with the wave motion. Flat water is going to be different than white water for obvious reasons. There tends to be more obstacles. Um, your body posture is going to be different depending on what kind of a boat you're in. So if you're sitting in a raft or a flat water canoe, you're probably sitting with feet on the floor of the boat. A white water canoe, you're probably kneeling. And with a kayak, you're seated with your legs stretched out in front of you. Um, the physical demands also depend on where you're going to be paddling and how far it is from the put-in, the take-out, whether or not there are portages, whether it's a rocky trail to get up and down with your boat and your gear, or whether it's just a couple hours at a honey hole or if you're going for a few weeks on a long expedition. Um, this picture is actually um, Skull Rapid in Westwater Canyon in Colorado River in southeastern Utah. If you ever get a chance, I highly recommend going out. Beautiful, beautiful canyon. While many paddlers recognize the importance of upper body strength, canoeing and kayaking are total body sports that rely on strength and flexibility throughout the entire kinetic chain. The lower body provides a connection to the boat and helps initiate powerful paddle strokes as well as maintain balance. Paddling also requires a great deal of core strength and rotator cuff strength. And again, depending on where you're uh, paddling, you got to be able to transport your boat and your gear to the put-in, from the takeout, and across any portages. Most of the muscle imbalances that I see in my paddling clients are actually more likely to occur because of their occupation, what they're doing all day, every day, which is frequently sitting in front of a computer screen, rather than by paddling simply because they don't have the opportunity to do enough of it for that to be the cause of their imbalance. Um, some of the more common imbalances that I do see, however, are tight hamstrings, pectorals, the muscles in your chest and the front of the shoulder girdle. Muscles that are commonly weak include the rotator cuff, other muscles in the back of the shoulder that help to stabilize your shoulder blade, and again the core, the core strength. And also muscles in the hips, the hip flexors, hip adductors, and gluteal muscles. This is a picture just showing part of an active isolated pec stretch with spinal rotation. It's a great exercise for paddlers because it helps to increase flexibility in your chest, the shoulders, the spine, and the outer hip. I would not recommend doing this one though if you have any kind of low back problem or disc pathology. A well-rounded training program for paddle sports depends a great deal on what kind of paddling you will be doing. However, all will require aerobic endurance, dynamic balance, agility and fast reaction time, total body strength, total body flexibility, core stability, rotator cuff strength and endurance, and grip strength. And this picture is from the Loxa River in Idaho, probably the clearest water I have ever seen anywhere on the planet. Another must do. The most common paddling injuries are usually to the shoulder and are a result of improper technique or weakness in the posterior shoulder girdle and rotator cuff. Uh, injuries to the back are usually a result of poor core strength and stability or again poor technique that comes around with fatigue. 
Um, dislocated shoulders are fairly common in whitewater kayaking and could be uh, minimized by practicing better paddling skills, especially for high bracing. I currently offer three different training program options. You can work with me one-on-one -on -one where we'll do an assessment and find out what your specific muscle imbalances are, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and get you on a customized program. Uh, if you have a group, small group of paddlers that you want to kind of split costs with, you'll still get some face time with a professional trainer. And then my cheapest option is the pre-designed programs that I offer through my catalog. Those are programs that you do independently. If you'd like to get more information about how I can help you improve your strength for paddle sports, feel free to contact me at any time. My phone is 612-804-9496 or you can visit my website at www.ksbodyshop.com. Happy paddling!